Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire has to be the most brilliant work of our generation. But George R.R. R. Martin got his inspiration for his books from real history. That's why when you read about places like Bravos and Winterfell, you can envision going there in your mind. They feel like places that you could actually visit. It's a rich world, jam-packed with real events from history, real cultures, real mythology, and sometimes if there weren't blood mages, fire priestesses, dragons, skin changers, and ice zombies, you might forget that this is a fantasy novel, but this is a fantasy novel. Today, I want to discuss the real world events that inspired A Song of Ice and Fire, that inspired some of these characters that we love and what it could mean for the future. One of the major conflicts that Game of Thrones is based on is the War of the Roses. The War of the Roses was an era of total chaos in England and it lasted about 32 years. The wars were between House Lancaster, the Red Roses, and House York, the White Roses. But in Game of Thrones, we have the Lannisters and the Starks. Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire is in no means a mirror of the War of Roses, but the footprints of the Tudors, Lancastrians, Yorks, and the events that unfolded during this period are felt in A Song of Ice and Fire. So let's just start with Henry VI, the Mad King. Henry VI wasn't cruel, nor did he burn people alive with wildfire, but Henry VI was a king that was unfit to rule. He was sickly, he would have hallucinations and bouts of unresponsiveness and basically intermittent periods of insanity. King Ares is definitely Henry VI. Ares is sickly and insane. He marries his son to the Dornish princess and slights Tywin by not marrying his son to Cersei. So I, I definitely see Henry VI in Ares Targaryen. Cersei has some things in common with Margaret of Anjou. She had the stomach to be queen and it was Margaret that ruled while her pitiful husband let his kingdom crumble. Margaret was a front and center player during the War of the Roses, the Lancastrian Queen, but I also see some of Elizabeth Woodville's footprints when it comes to Cersei and some Mary Tudor as well. So basically what happens is the Yorks try to overthrow the Lancasters. Richard of York winds up coming for the crown and then he is executed by Margaret of Anjou and his head is placed on a spike. Ned Stark, anyone. So then Richard's son, Edward, is ready for war. He's an excellent soldier and proves his prowess in battle. He wins his kingdom for now. There sits the only king I mean to bend my knee to. The king of the north. But it's not over. Edward needs to make a marriage, a good marriage, to strengthen his claim on the English throne. His biggest supporter and ally, the kingmaker, the Earl of Warwick is lining up proposals and fitting Edward for a bride that can bring him the most power, but Edward announces that he was married in a secret ceremony to Elizabeth Woodville. Father, Smith, warrior, mother, maiden, crone, stranger. I am hers and she is mine. Not only is her house a minor Lancastrian house, she's widowed and this shit is just unheard of. However, they're in love and King Edward doesn't care what anyone thinks. Um, his most loyal supporters turn on him. The Earl of Warwick being a major person that turns on him. A lot of the noble houses that have bent the knee to him, they all turned on him, even capturing him for a time. You definitely feel Rob Stark when you think of Edward. However, Elizabeth Woodville reminds me of Cersei. After King Edward dies, that you start to see Elizabeth Woodville in Cersei. When Edward dies, the throne is to pass to his son, Edward. But the king names his brother, Richard III, as regent until the king comes of age. This causes another war when the Woodville clan try to undo Richard's regency and let the 12-year-old Edward be crowned and ruled right then and there. Lord Eddard Stark is herein named protector of the realm, to rule as regent until the heir come of age. Those were the king's words. We have a new king now. And then Richard decides the queen's sons are not legitimate 
and their bastards and he's going to seize power for himself i actually don't think it was that malice there were a bunch of things that led to this and basically richard did what he thought he had to do he did what was what he thought was right for the realm richard is in my opinion stannis baratheon and also some Tyrion. and edward's other brother george the duke of clarence is renly all day long while Edward is still alive, George switches sides and tries to seize the crown for himself. He was a vain man, and his death is still a mystery, much like Renly's to other people that aren't looking at it from our point of view. Some say that George was secretly beheaded by his brother. Others say he was drowned in a barrel of Malmsey wine. Um, we really don't know. So Henry Tudor, the first Tudor king, Henry VII, is a mix of characters. People compare him to Daenerys. I don't see the Daenerys comparison to Henry Tudor other than him being raised in exile and crossing the English Channel from France to take the throne. The character I feel Daenerys is the most similar to in history is William the Conqueror and he came about long before the Wars of the Roses. I think the War of the Roses aspects of the books are primarily footprinted in Westeros during the War of Five Kings. Henry VII ended the War of the Roses when he beat Richard in battle. I've said before, Richard III is our Stannis and our Tyrion, but the Lancastrian heir, the Tudor King, Henry VII, is definitely going to be Joffrey of the House Lannister. A lot of people make an argument that Sansa is Elizabeth of York. Elizabeth of York was King Edward's eldest daughter, and her marriage was arranged to join the houses of Lancaster and York and to put an end to the War of the Roses. But Elizabeth of York, I feel both apply to Sansa and Marjorie Tyrell. Elizabeth of York's brothers were put in the tower and both killed by Richard. And yes, Sansa does believe that Bran and Rickon are dead and she is supposed to marry Joffrey. But what truly ends the War of the Five Kings is the marriage between Marjorie and Joffrey. And Marjorie's sigil is even a rose. The War of the Roses gets its name because the Lancastrian Red Rose and the York White Rose were the sigils of the houses. But after the war, House Tudor took both roses, the red and the white, and made that their sigil. I eat from plates stamped with roses. I sleep in sheets embroidered with roses. I have a golden rose painted on my chamber pot. As if that makes it smell any better. Another thing that makes me believe that Marjorie is our Elizabeth of York and Joffrey is our Henry VII is because Henry VII was illegitimate. He came from House Buford. House Buford started as an illegitimate house. And when they were legitimized, Parliament passed a bill that no Bufords nor their descendants could claim the throne. And his bloodline comes from basically a steward, Edmund. And we know that Tyrells were basically stewards of House Gardner before Aegon's conquest. So I think that all kind of wraps up together nicely. But if the series as a whole is going to follow House Tudor's storyline, then what could that mean for the end of the game? So I think Joffrey and Marjorie's reign was the first reign of a Tudor dynasty in Game of Thrones. After Henry VII came Henry VIII. I actually think Robert favors Henry VIII a lot. I see a lot of Henry VIII and Robert with all the whores and partying and scandalous shit. But Tommen does have some things in common with Henry VIII. Firstly, Henry VIII was a second son, like Tommen, and Henry VIII only became king because his brother Arthur died before him. And when their father died, Arthur was already dead, so Henry got the throne. But one of the many shit stains on the reign of Henry VIII was his beef with the Catholic Church and the Pope. Basically, this was all due to his disregard for the sanctity of marriage, and Tommen also has issues with the faith in the High Septon during his reign. But when Henry died, Edward would succeed his father, but only briefly. And then England had their first queen without a king, Queen Mary, which Westeros, after Tommen died, had their first queen without a king, Cersei. I now proclaim Cersei of the House Lannister, first of her name, queen of the Andals and the first men, protector of the seven kingdoms mary was the first woman to successfully claim the english throne mary would be nicknamed bloody mary because she burned 
238 Protestants at the stake during her quest to reconcile the Catholic Church with the throne of England. Cersei much. Burning holy people. That Cersei all day long. And what's funny is her death. I mean, it's not funny, of course, but it makes sense for Cersei. Mary was wed to Philippe of Spain. In 1557, Mary thought she was pregnant with a baby due in March of 1558. She decreed in her will that Philippe should rule as regent until the child come of age, but no baby ever came. In 1558, Mary grew sick and weak and she was just in constant pain. People think she may have had ovarian cysts or uterine cancer, which the uterine cancer may have led her to believe that she was pregnant. She died and was succeeded by her half-sister, the bastard Elizabeth the Virgin Queen. Now, Elizabeth wasn't technically a bastard. Her mother, Anne Boleyn, was indeed married to Henry, but during Mary's rule, she had her mother, Catherine of Aragon, and Henry VIII's marriage re-legitimized. If I'm right about the War of the Roses and the Tudor dynasty similarities, then it will be Tyrion that comes after Cersei. And if it isn't Tyrion, it will be Daenerys. But that would mean that there will need to be a revelation that Cersei is Daenerys' half-sister. But I'm leaning more towards Tyrion because technically Tyrion is Cersei's heir. I mean, if you wanted to be really technical, her heir is Jaime, but Jaime is Kingsguard. He's been released from his vows, but let's be honest, Jaime won't be around at the end of this thing. Either way, whoever becomes king or queen, Elizabeth's era was called the Golden Age and she reigned for over 40 years. I honestly believe a part of the bittersweet ending is going to be Tyrion on the throne and it's going to shock a lot of people but what do you think am i crazy here <laughs> probably as always thanks for watching thanks to everyone that supports me on patreon if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please click that subscribe button hit that notification bell and join the sweet summer family okay my sweet summer children have a good day